So I'm going to uh, break in this this fire hearth here. I built this last summer. I never did uh, break it in. There was there are some cottonwood logs, They're nicely seasoned. I'm anticipating them to do real well for the night. And here I got Korean era casualty sleeping bag. Wool anorak, my favorite wool sweater. Got my Hudson Bay four point. Deer hide, canvas tarp, and some a uh, couple sleep mats there. So uh, I should be quite all right. I shouldn't need a fire. I built this shelter with the idea I could live in it year round, or or at least through the winter. And so far it's holding up, it's quite a bit of snow on this roof. And I tell you, it is really nice to be able to stand up. Stand up and stretch your arms out. So far it's holding up real well. So the, uh, the temperatures are starting to drop a little bit. <clears throat> I haven't had any gloves yet, but I'm not touching snow either. You can see a little bit of red in my hands, but uh, you know, I'm fine. I got on long sleeve cotton. I got a tank top cotton and this, uh, this is really you know, pretty thin wool sweater. As long as I keep moving, I'm fine. Uh, you know, people think when they go do this, I tell them about it, they think that you're just out there shivering and I don't know, I don't know what the hell they think, but uh, if that was the case, I probably wouldn't do this. Um, but I just wanted to stress it. Um, when you come out and you get familiar with what's going on, there's there's less panic in the situation. So I got, you know, a ton, I got plenty of insulation, uh, no fire or not, whatever, I'm gonna make it no matter what. So I'm not gonna freeze, so that's a nice, um, that's comforting to know that but uh you know the day is progressing the temperature's dropping and uh you know i'll probably keep doing this for a little bit because i needed to dry out i was uh i'd gotten pretty sweaty but i can dry out a little bit just keep on working and gain some ground with that Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get this fire started without using any of this. This is actually, uh, it's a re resource you got to really kind of regulate around your camp because after you have a permanent camp for <clears throat> five years or whatever, you you find you got to start going farther into the woods to get some stuff you need, you know, like firewood. So, I mean, there's always new deadfall with this lodgepole, but uh 
you know you start picking all the trees clean of uh you know this stuff so what i'll do is i'm gonna try to get by without burning that and i'll have that on reserve for next time or if i want to get something going in the morning so i'm gonna, what i do have a lot of is cottonwood so this is usually my primary uh nesting material um it just has a very voluminous flame to it it just goes up and it's just uh you know, it's very healthy flame, does really well with drying stuff out and getting little twigs going and things. Uh, what I don't have an abundance of is birch. So I have to go, I don't know, 20 miles before I start finding birch. Even then it's rare, or not really rare, but it's not real and abundant. And there's laws about uh, harvesting it. So I got this from, uh, they did a, a slash cut along a logging road and cut down some birch. And I just happened to get lucky to come around and get it. So I got some stuff for spoons and, and things of that nature, but generally I got to really kind of regulate uh, my birch because I don't I don't really have it in abundance. So, anyways, those are some of the those are the reasons why I want to make the decisions I'm going to make when I go forward with this fire. I have to think about resources.
that's actually pretty good. Got a little bit of rind there skin or something. I mean, it wouldn't take much. Wouldn't take much for that to keep it going. That's pretty good. You should try it. That's really good. That's that's no butter, salt, nothing, pepper. This knife is a Pathfinder trade knife. It's made by Habilis. It recently thickened the handle. Bird drill divot. I kind of put this aside for a little while when I realized what a good Skinner knife it was. And I I questioned whether I wanted to use it for bushcraft or skinning because I kind of like to keep the two separate. But uh, this thing did such a good job. First day I even took it out, I got the opportunity to use that and I thought, well, let's just see what it feels like and fleshing an animal next thing you knew I was done so it's uh it's not at all too bulky and it worked really well so I've kind of had that back to the side a little bit <clears throat> but then I started feeling sorry for it because it hasn't had any bush time so I brought that out and I'm glad I did um, this here is a Silver War era fork this is a really nice piece of gear and here's just a recent spoon I've been working on. I have not been able to get this bannock to do anything. I'm going to have to ask my lovely assistant about that one. She might be the fairest in the land, but I think she put cornmeal on that to kind of give it some... a little more density for go food, but uh, it's not rising. It's not doing nothing really. I'm not entirely sure. I want to try to use it as dumplings. Okay, well, I just stuck it deep in there. I'm sure the bottom's a little crispy, but uh, that's some nice golden brown there. Should have never doubted my lovely assistant. That's looking pretty good. Okay, I'll put it back in there just a few more minutes.
salted fat's really good. This is professional grade. There's not a single person on this earth that's eating better than I am at this moment. It's so nice to come out here and not be afraid of the cold in the winter. To be comfortable. Cannot fear it or dread it. Pig skin's pretty good. Every fire has a story. Okay, well, camp's put away. Got everything where I want so I can find it in the morning. <laughs>